Hello, Ted Fletcher with FMS. So I wanted to do an overview on how you can actually take Excel data and bind it to shapes within Microsoft Visio. So in order to get started, like I have a template sheet that I've created, which I'm going to open up here. And it has a series of select columns for location, device type, device name, manufacturer, model, serial, tag number, rating, connection information being IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, switch and port, whether it's an ethernet switch or a serial gateway, the hardware address program to a device, the software address that may differ, um, pulling information from a device, comm settings, typically, you know, more or less uh, your Modbus RTU serial comm parameters, um, any sort of comments, and then miscellaneous notes. So I've found over the years that having these columns set up this way give a good level of information that then we're able to bind to shapes within Visio. So going over to Visio, if I was to minimize this and open up this diagram, this is a template that I came up with for different applications where you know create a cover page for it you have different um, acronyms and symbols that are used throughout the doc showing the floor plan of this document and then here I have a uh, port connection for a 16 port MOXA unit so if I zoom in on this you can kind of see on the 16 port MOXA I a fan of using MOXAs for serial to ethernet communications. Here we can see we have port one, two, three, and then there's a specific amount of slave IDs used per port. So kind of going across on a 16 port using an even range uh, can get you up to 240, but you can also adjust this as required. So in one of the other videos I'll put together, I'll show you how we actually make these shapes and be able to bind the Excel data to it. So to get the process started, we want to bring in our Excel sheet. So I want to go to the data tab up on the top, left click. I go to custom import, left click on that. Uh, in this example, we're going to use Microsoft Excel workbook. So I'm just going to leave that radio button selected and click next. Here we're going to actually browse to where we have that file located. If I go up to here, go to downloads, I'm going to select that Excel doc. So once we have our file paths defined, we're going to click on next. And then we're going to select the tab in that workbook. In this example, I only have the one tab configured. so. Uh, Visio automatically pointed the data selector to the right tab. You want to leave first row of data contains column headings. Click on next. Here I leave it set to all columns, all data for the rows. Uh, if you do have a lot of data within your sheet, uh, Visio will come back and kind of give you a warning that you're about to import a lot of data. So we're going to go next come down to here so over the years I've tried playing around with different formats with names and it's hard to always identify a unique identifier without having an index number called out in the sheet so by selecting the second radio button rows in my data do not have unique identifier use the order of the rows to identify changes to where Visio will look at the row being the indexing number in order to understand what cells get lined up to what shapes. So I'm going to click on next and then click on finish. So here you can see now on the right hand side it populated all this external data. So you can drag the sheet over and then you can see all of our available columns. If we wanted to adjust this to be able to go back and forth, that's where we can identify everything else going across on our device depending on what we're looking at so we know we're dealing with our first moxa unit it's a 16 port so i have all 16 addresses being called out going through this format so here 
if I drag this back over, within Visio, under your stencils, you have your shapes. Your shapes you can actually bind logic to. So here, let's say if I wanted to pick my first Moxa device, I'm just gonna take this, and I can kind of just tell by my formatting where it is. We have that. We have panels, Ethernet gateway. So this would be our Moxa device. So on the left hand side, under your stencil, you'd select the shape that you have configured. And then from the right hand side, from external data, you just select that row, left click, hold it, drag it over. And then here you can see without having to go in and manually type, it just dragged out all that information as far as the unit name, IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, um, switch in port, and then location. So I'm gonna take this, drag this down, line that up to about the center there. I'm just gonna move this over to the left, get it to hug that Moxa unit. So now if I wanted to call out individual slave devices, I actually have this slave device uh, serial and then a simplified one that I use on busway applications. So this, I'm gonna select that device. Then I'm gonna go up to what would be my first port. Like if I went over here and looked, you can see port one, two, three, all based on that Moxa. So I'm gonna drag this back over. Then I'm gonna go port one. kind of got a long name in it so I got to just stretch that out a little bit so there we go now we see our RPP for data hall one with all the set addressing so in this I'm going to drag the rest of them then I'll just resize after so I'm going to select the second device on port two port three port four five six Eight. So you can see just by doing this, it saves a lot of time to where you can review your application through the Excel sheet. And then it's just a matter of dragging that information over. You don't have to retype anything. And this in essence works with anything. Oh, there we go. This that one. And then we've got that one. So here I'm going to select all this. I'm just going to make it the same size. There we go. Now we have all this laid out. So then the last thing I would typically do, I'll get the device name. Box page, rename. I'm going to do P1 through P16. So port 1 through port 16. Maximize that out. And just adjust this height a little bit. There you go. Hit save. Now I have all this information bound from the sheet. If I was to go back into the sheet and modify one of these other tabs or one of these other rows, it would then, next time we did a data sync through Visio, these um, shapes would update accordingly. So here I'm just gonna do a new page. I'm gonna duplicate this, select everything, tell it to delete. So kind of going back through that process, I'm gonna grab my 16 port reference out. I'm gonna find my ethernet gateway, my Moxa, select that over onto the left. Now I'm gonna drag this out Shift that over. Probably have to bring that down a little bit. So what I'm going to show here is when we actually go to update those fields. So I'm going to select available and then slave device. So here I'm going to drag out this first one. Second one. I'm gonna pause this, finish putting it in place just to help shave some time off from you having to watch me go through this process. 
All right, and we're back. I got all 16 populated. Last thing I'm gonna do here is I actually do use a color code, green, good, red, there's some sort of uh, issue. Um, yellow, sometimes need to be troubleshoot. Um, and then blue for available. So I'm just gonna select, whoop, do that. Bumped the wrong button. There we go. So now I got all these shown as blue. I'm gonna hit save. So one of the cool things, if you build a template sheet, in essence, you can bind all your logic for how your Excel sheet's gonna be, update your Excel sheet, and then not have to come back in and redo this. I'm gonna use this as an example. So on MDF001 MX02, I'm gonna update port one device in the Excel sheet. So I'm gonna to come to here, which would be this one, row 19. So here I'm just gonna put my room, my device, So 001, 002, 003, as far as the addressing scheme, whoop, hold control down, drag that across, there we go. So now I'm gonna hit save, minimize. Then if I come up to my data and tell it to refresh all, we'll see this field will automatically populate. There it goes. So this is where, depending on how you wanna create your shape, of what you want to show, how your format is. Are you going with something simple? Do you want to show a picture of a device? Uh, it's really kind of comes down to your creative edge of what you want to do. Because if I come up to view and I go task pane, then I go shape data. Now if I select that cell, you can see all the information that is on external data, we can actually view through here, which is a very nice feature, especially if your organization uses Office 365, you can actually view this Visio information through your Office 365 um, standard suite package. So that is going to be the first one of this. I'm going to go into other videos showing how we do the shapes, how we define the rows and columns. Again, you can always modify this process to whatever works best for your organization. Uh, but this was just a quick overview of how we can embed Excel data into Visio, And we're going to make some more videos diving in a little bit deeper with the creative side. So thank you very much for your time.